It just glows red. Like how the light shift from the blue to the red. And the whole thing just gets angry. That is so cool. Hello YouTube, I got another video for you. Uh, I got something fancy on the test server because I am lucky and I am very lucky. Uh, but I got my hands on a Faction Phoenix, which is awesome. And I already recorded this video and decided I was going to do it a little bit differently after some testing. Uh, I thought that the highlight of these faction ships was going to be their increased firepower or whatever. Uh, but this video is going to be primarily on the Phoenix. Uh, I notated uh, originally, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into this. Let's go ahead and uh, hit the game button. We will go ahead and hit R. And I'm going to go through all of the differences between the Phoenix and the Faction Phoenix with you guys real quick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find ships. Dreadnoughts. Kaldari. And I need to make it so it shows also unavailable ones. Uh, so we have Navy Faction. Why are they not here? Uh, anyways, if I hit I there, variations, and hit I there and I there, and then we won't have my Phoenix. We'll have the one that I have. Uh, so we have this, the, the Faction Phoenix as it is on the test server right now. And then we have uh, a standard Phoenix as well. Uh, and the traits, uh, the first difference that we notice is that the uh, the bonus to damage is up by 2.5% per level, meaning instead of a 25% bonus, it'll be 37.5. The resistance bonus is the same. The missile launcher reload bonus is the same. And it gets an additional target painter effectiveness bonus, which is awesome for application in HA situations. So high angle weapons, definitely get a huge bonus. A uh, description is obviously going to be a little bit different uh, because we have different things. Uh, the place where this ship really shines, uh, where I found it really shines, uh, one super important part about dreads is their EHP because they either fit active or buffer fit. And dread bombs are buffer fit. So generally, uh, you will have a buffer fit dread, they'll throw away, they just kind of die. Or you have an active fit where you have a ha or or versus subcapitals, you tend to go active fit, much like on the video with the uh, faxes that I just did. Uh, dreads function in much the same way in combat. They're either buffer or active. Because once you siege, you can't get remote reps. You, you, you're kind of SOL. Uh, anyways, volume's the same. Uh, but one thing that I did want to point out is... For structure hit points, we have 156,000 EHP versus 104, uh, which is about a 50% bonus. It is literally exactly a 50% bonus. Not quite. 1563, 114, it's just a little off 50%. Uh, we noticed that the resistances are the same as well 33 across uh, hull, 50, 45, 25, and 10, and then 0, 20, 40, and 50. Uh, the resistances are the same. And the armor hit points, again, up by 50%. Uh, we have another 40,000 here, a little over 40,000, or a little over 50%. Uh, there's a little bit more than 40,000 more uh, EHP and armor. And then the shield capacity is much the same. We have an additional 56,000 uh, EHP in the shield. And then the uh, shield regeneration is the same. So they actually end up with a higher passive regen as well. Uh, going down the list of attributes, uh, I did double check. Everything is identical. Uh, they do have the same lock ranges, targeting range, and everything. Uh, I looked at the, the jump range and the speeds. It, it's all identical. So the only notable difference in the attributes tab is 50% more HP across the board. Uh, the fun part <laughs> is in fitting, the Phoenix gets seven medium slots, whereas the Navy Phoenix gets eight. And then everything else is identical. We have five, five, and three, five, five, and three. And then for power grid, we get an extra 250,000. Uh, we have uh, five point... Or, 550,000, so 25,000 megawatts, and we get 20 extra CPU, uh, which is kind of notable. Uh, this allows us to fit additional things, and it also feeds that extra mid slot as well. Uh, they're already notoriously tight to fit, but now they're not so much tight to fit. They, or the, the faction version isn't super tight. Without further ado, so if we notice the 50% EHP 
buff. Uh, we can easily math out the extra damage and, and application. That's not the exciting part about this. I, I was excited about it, and I went and ran a crab beacon with this, and it was it demolished the crab beacon. It was amazing. And then a dude was like, hey, can I doomsday that? On the test room, I was like, yeah, let me go put a buffer fit on. And when I put the buffer fit on, I realized something. It has some health. Uh, I I will go ahead and say that I did throw in, um, I did go on to the thing and I threw on high grade Narvanas and we have a shield management set five, both three. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, well, 3%. We'll just, what is the role with it? Anyways, I, I threw Nirvana high grades, which give us an additional 50,000 or 50%, not 50,000, 50, 50% HP, uh, where our normal would probably be, what would it be? 50% less than this is 2.1, uh, 2.2, 2.1, 2 .2, 2 uh, kind of in that ballpark of EHP. So this is before hardeners. We turn on the hardeners, it gets up to just under nine. This is a Dreadnought. That is a lot of EHP. But wait, there's more. Uh, so this is obviously a, like a basic buffer fit. We got the three Concord Shield Extenders, two Pythum C-types, uh, two X-type partners, a EM and a Thermal. Uh, EM and Thermal are, are the two of the most common damages. Uh, the Moros uh, is, does Thermal damage. Uh, the Phoenix will do EM or uh, Explosive. The Neglifer will do whatever it does generally does explosive uh, with hail, or it'll do uh, EM with with uh, phase plasma, or, or thermal with phase plasma, or EM with, uh, whatchamacallit, and the rev is, is EM thermal. So pretty much regardless of what you're fighting, this is probably going to be the right hardener layout, but depending on the fight, you, you never know what you're going to get. And then also depending on, you know, what, what super is attacking you or whatever, it, it, it's just going to depend on the scenario. I left the slot open for a target painter. It does fit. I do have one in the cargo. And we have a regular tech 3 damage control. So this is the quote unquote cheap variant. Uh, but these things are likely to be over 10 billion isk in the uh, in the whole cost. Uh, is is my prediction? They'll they'll be around 12 probably. Uh, if we get lucky, they'll be a little bit more than regular. They'll probably be like six bill. And they'll be really reasonable. So something like this would be a reasonable fit. Uh, but if if they're like 12 billion isk, uh, you're going to want to go to A-types. And if we switch these out to A-types, um, before going hot, uh, we're going to go ahead and exit the sim there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take these guys off. And I'm going to throw the two A-types on. I'm going to hit the simulate button again. And now we get an extra 1.3 million EHP. We're over 10, boys. It's over 9,000, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, so we got that going for us, which is nice. And then if we throw on a third hardener, we get up to 12. Or we can throw up a plate, which we also get up to 12. I think the plate's a little bit better. Uh, so now we get up to 12, right? So we're up to 12 million EHP on a dread. And this isn't the most unreasonable thing. You would probably have a target painter for like Haws and Crab Beacons or something. But this is enough EHP that you're not going to instantaneously die. It's it, it's actually really crazy how much tank this actually is. Uh, and then the other thing that we can do is we can take that off and throw this boy on. And it only gives us an extra like 300,000, but it's only 200 million isk. Uh, so that's the thing. And then we can roll it hot. And we roll it hot, we get 17.7. This is super territory, boys. My super gets about 20 plus million. So we're, we're almost up to super tank with this. I'm not going to give you the exact EHP of my, my super, but this is very close. Um, Yeah, this is what is insane about this faction dread. Uh, it has an insane tank on it, and it can actually tank a bit. I actually played with the idea of doing a uh, capital... Uh, which we call it shield. Uh, so we go shield and then we go ahead and throw on or a, a capital uh, emergency damage control. I looked at that hole in armor. This might actually be the better option because when your shields die, you can flip it on and it would give you a little bit more. Um, and then now we're at 20 million HP. 
uh, when we activate that. But it's going to be less when it's not active. Uh, given that it's it's a um, given that it's it, it's a dread, and when it does get attacked, it's it's likely to uh, be hit by supers. Or is it the Sisters Capital Emergency brings us up to? Are we going to get twenty one? No, not quite. Uh, but this is just insane. This is on another level of insanity. This is with full weapons. I guess we're over on power grid with this, so it doesn't quite work. Uh, you would have to do something a little bit different or, or figure out how to save some power grid. Uh, this is just a tech two slap together kind of fit. And then offensively, yes, we're doing some crazy DPS at 10,000 DPS. I don't have the skills for tech two, uh, but I think they're making about 15K DPS uh, with max skills and everything, which is absolutely insane. Again, that's another crazy number. Dreads normally make 10 to 12 uh, with perfect skills and tech two and all that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the beauty of this uh, particular ship. And then uh, there's Command Burst too. Uh, the person that doomsayed me did ask if I want to see Command Burst. We can add roughly 40% to this uh, and it will be, what will it end up at? Uh, 44%. Uh, I can math it. So 44% more would be, was that three? So there's 15 million. EHP cold, and we overheat this, uh, we would easily cross to 22, 23 million EHP with the burst. That's... All right. So yeah, that's 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 what this thing has. Uh, it's it's uh, on another level. I will leave the rest of the video uh, with some things shooting me, because I did record that. And if you like this video, make sure you comment down below. Like, comment, and subscribe. Here it goes. I'm not hot, by the way. This is cold. <laughs> it should be an EM lance that we get. Oh, dear. Here we go. <laughs> nice. This thing is actually tanking the doomsday. That was disgusting. Here it goes. <laughs> How much damage did we do? 15%. So the Vendetta switched over to max DPS, uh, and we're going to let it hit me again. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we're at 80%, and it's going to hit me. That brings us down to 74%. That is insane. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of these fits or of these faction dreads. And uh, I will also include, uh, hopefully, past me already did this or your past me or future me or whatever you want to call it. Uh, put in a clip of this thing sieging because this thing is gorgeous when it sieges. Uh, when it's just in space and when it works, it lights up blue. It's really cool. And when it sieges, that blue turns red and it gets angry. And when it's moving, like exhaust vents come, this thing is just cool. It's got some really cool lights on it. It's, it's graphically pleasing. It looks really cool compared to the regular Phoenix. I think I grabbed one uh, to show off here, uh, make active. So here's a standard Phoenix. It's not quite as cool. It's not as flashy. Uh, but they did uh, update the model for the Phoenix. Uh, it's definitely a bit different. We got these little plates in front, and it just looks a little sleeker and, and it, just a little bit more rounded off. It, it got some high resolution textures and and looks more like I, I, I imagine a Phoenix looking rather than what it looks like on the live server. So it did definitely get a model update. 
uh, which is really cool. Um, I renamed it Buffer Ship Hanger. There we go. Make active. No, make active. But yeah, I I enjoyed covering the ship. Make sure you guys fly fun, and uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.